You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them, right? When should you sell a bad investment? When should you sell a bad rental property? When should you cut the cord, pull the plug, whatever, right? You're losing money. When do you get rid of it? Let's talk. All right, y'all. So this investor here, he's an investor in California named Tim B. Posted on the Bigger Pockets Real Estate Forums. When to sell a bad rental? I have a rental where market rent for this single family is around $2,000 a month. It's been vacant since June. That puts it vacant for about four months now. I started advertising it at $2,100 and steadily lowered it to now $1,700. I've gotten a few bites and some apps, but mostly deadbeats with evictions and bad rental history. Should I keep going lower or should I sell? It's all paid off, but rates are high, so I'm not thinking refi at this time. Purchase price was around 215 k with rehab at about 25 k It's probably worth about 290 right now. It was rented for three years for $2,150 and then became vacant four months ago. Thoughts? Thanks. And then, you know, a few people popped on and they were asking him some follow-up questions and going over some stuff. And he said something else that I thought uh, was pretty ac applicable, pretty important, okay? Um, he talks how he um, likes some of the replies and he does have a PM and he does like to rent his properties to Section 8 tenants, okay? I think that's pretty important. Now... There is a lot to unpack here uh, to decide when you should sell or when you should not sell, right? And uh, a lot of it is really going to vary by person, by location, but like just breaking down what Tim has going on here. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about market rent, right? What is market rent? Well, according to him, he's had it for around 2000 bucks a month and he's had it vacant for four months now, okay? He started above market rent, what he claims is market rent, at 2100 and he's had to move it down to 1700 right? So that begs the question. The first question I'd ask is, are you sure you know what market rent is, right? What, what have you done to determine market rent, right? Uh, four months of vacancy in 2024 in a place like California? Well... I don't know. Maybe you're not actually at market rent, right? Rents go up. They don't really go down. Um, he did happen to rent it previously to somebody for $21.50. I will say this. It's possible he got very, very lucky back then. Every once in a while, you can get lucky and get like one person to randomly pay more. Uh, you know, maybe he's not even thinking about some other circumstances. Perhaps that person was paying less, but then they were paying like pet fees, right? Or perhaps he didn't properly screen that tenant. Every once in a while, you'll get tenants who have bad uh, files, applications, right? They have a intense criminal history. They've been evicted in the past. They have poor job history, things of that nature. These are people that they can't find housing anywhere else. They keep getting denied by landlord after landlord after landlord. So when they finally find a landlord who's willing to rent to them, they are willing to pay a premium just to get in somewhere uh, so they can actually have a roof over their head. Now, I'm not advocating you guys go out there and try to find underqualified tenants because that's probably going to lead uh, to nothing but pain for you. So it's possible he just got completely lucky with that tenant and he's totally missed the mark. He's completely missed the mark on what market rent actually is, right? You know, if you put out a, a unit for rent and you ain't getting a bunch of qualified applicants, right? And you've like renovated it properly. It looks decent, right? Like the market will tell you what market rent is, right? If ain't nobody out there trying to trying to rent it for 2K, yo, that's not market rent, bro. You're just wrong. And, you know, he's had to lower, 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 right? He's all the way down to 17. Maybe market rent really isn't that high in that particular location. I don't know the specific location. I don't have any other info on that. But it's very possible that you first need to look under the hood there and figure out, hey, am I actually right? Where are my comps on what market rent is, right? You want to check out Zillow. You want to check out Facebook Marketplace, things of that nature. And then when you see properties that are available for rent that you're using as your comps, 
follow up on them in the coming weeks, right? See if they're still available for rent, right? If you see a comp, you're like, oh, well, this guy's got a comp at 2000 a month. I look at it right now, and then 35 days later, that property's still available for rent. 45 days later, it's still available for rent. 55 days later, it's still available for rent. You know what that tells you? It tells you, oh, th I'm wrong, and he's wrong, because neither of us could rent our property, right? So you want to find comps that you check on them, and then like two weeks, three weeks later, they're no longer available on the internet because they actually rented them, right? It's like when you're buying a house. You don't really want to look at active comps. You want to look at sold comps, right? So that's one thing. This guy's got to first figure out if he can't rent it because he's actually wrong on what the market rent is. Then after that, you want to check the condition. Did you properly do a tenant turnover or are you trying to hawk something to somebody that's got like a 1990s vibe to it did you not clean it up right did you not fix it up did you actually do the proper renovation and again you're going to want to look at comps there and like you know look into your kitchen like is your kitchen outdated do you need to update your kitchen are other landlords offering appliances and you're not things of that nature right so that's how you would handle the badness of this property in regards to not being able to rent it okay and this guy he does it section eight so like you could look on like go section eight's website and see what the other landlords are doing right so that is is pretty simple and then that's another great way to comp it out too there's going to be a ton of stuff on the on the section eight website right because when you're renting properties especially the section eight tenants dude if you've priced it right renovated it right the amount of calls you get is insanity. It's like 100 calls a week per unit, okay? There is no shortage of Section 8 tenants, okay? So that's that. Now, another caveat to this, right? So this is just like, first of all, solving Tim's issue, Tim's problem of like it being bad because he can't rent it, right? It's probably not the property, Tim. It's probably either your renovation or you're still wrong on the market price, right? Moving on though, right? Another thing to talk about here. This is a rental property in California. California, not widely considered to be like a cash flow market, right? Maybe he's like, oh, when I finally do get a tenant here, I'm not making much cash flow. Or in his instance, it's sitting empty and he's not getting cash flow today. He's got longer periods of vacancy, probably because he's trying to charge too much rent or pay too little in renovations. Um, but does that really make it a bad rental property? It's California, bro. California rental properties, any property, any house, any real estate in California is on a one-way trajectory, and that is up, right? This is an appreciating place, right? Like, are you really going to make all your money with a California property based on people paying you rent, or are you going to make a ton of money because when you bought it, it was here, and then when you eventually sell it, it's worth this? He's already even seen a ton of appreciation, right? He bought it three years ago at 215 put 25 into it. So that's 225, 240, okay, 240. And now if he's correct, he says it's worth 290. So that's already $50,000, okay? The thing is making almost $20,000 a year in appreciation if he's correct, right? So if you're thinking, should I get rid of my bad rental property? Are you only focused on the cash flow that you've earned? every year or are you also factoring in your appreciation every year right because if this guy you know does eventually get a tenant in there and then it runs let's say it runs even or cash flow negative maybe your california rental property ended up costing you 200 bucks a month so you were negative 2400 right that means from the rents you got and then the expenses you put out, right? Taxes, repairs, maintenance, capital expenditures. Let's say you ended up a net loss of $2,400. You're like, oh no, I'm losing money. I lost $2,400 by owning this rental property. But dummy, your thing appreciated almost 20 grand. So let's say it appreciated 20 grand and then you lost 2,400. Did you really lose 2,400 or did you make like 17 and a half thousand dollars, right? It's called negative gearing. You guys got to think of that too, right? So for this guy's question, it's like, bro, are you sure you actually have a bad rental property or is your mindset broken? Are you just like trying to figure it out? But again, that's going to be different for everybody, right? Like maybe Tim here uh, is a person 
who is struggling to pay his bills. Maybe he's living paycheck to paycheck. If you're a guy who's living paycheck to paycheck and you can't cover your bills, maybe paying like 2400 a year or having to cover 200 bucks or so a month in costs is killing him. Maybe he can't afford to pay all of his bills. In that case, maybe you do want to cash in your chips and move on, okay? But if you're a person who doesn't need the cash flow, doesn't need the money, well, you got to really focus on that and really realize, like, oh, I'm not actually really losing money here. I'm actually gaining money, right? And I'm just utilizing my tenants to cover a majority of my costs to offset my costs while my investment continues to grow and grow and grow. It's really a mindset thing, right? you got a lot of investors who invest in real estate, uh, and they're really trying to gather as much monthly cash flow as they can because their goal is to replace their current income from their job and become a full-time real estate professional. Well, that's one thing. You probably don't want to buy a California rental property in that case. You probably want to be investing in the Midwest. You probably want to be investing in, like, Detroit, Cleveland, Baltimore, something like that. You're probably not thinking about investing in California. But then there's a whole other segment of real estate investors. Think you're wealthy people. You know, your engineers, your doctors, your lawyers, they have a whole bunch of money and they're looking for tax shelters and they're just looking for a place to park their money and let their money grow. If that's the case, this rental property doesn't seem like a bad rental property to me because you're getting almost $20,000 a year in growth. And that's not counting any of the cash flow or negative cash flow that it may pan out. Now, I'm assuming with this guy having absolutely no mortgage on this property, if he actually does put some tenants in there, uh, he's probably going to end up cash flowing a little bit of money anyway or at least breaking even. Uh, but it's really just all about figuring out what his actual market rent really is, right? And he says he put 25 into it a couple years ago, so maybe he doesn't really need to renovate it. His probably biggest issue here is probably he just doesn't know what market rent is. That's my guesstimate. But again, I'm just operating off of limited information here. And of course, everybody, every person is going to, you know, have a, a bunch of variables that will adjust, uh, you know, what makes sense for you. Uh, but the real thing here is... Let's first answer the question, like, is my rental really bad? Because to be honest with you guys, there's really, it's pretty hard to, like, have a bad rental property, right? Like, like cars, right? Cars are considered a liability because they typically go down in value. Real estate is always an asset because it typically goes up in value. They ain't making any more land, right? Now, if you buy it at the wrong price, you made your mistake there. But, like, usually actually physically owning real estate is almost never bad guys it's always an asset thanks for watching subscribe to holton wise tv for more financial information education and entertainment